Right, so this is the last part of our second week uh, lecture. Uh, so I'm going to discuss the research, yeah, ongoing research in personality psychology and um, uh, and also some issues that con uh, some issues concerning on uh, whether uh, psychological theories are good are good enough and how uh, and, and several precautions as well when you try to learn about personality theories. So research in personality psychology are largely uh, dependent on uh, several methods, yeah, several research design. Uh, for example, in classical experimental method, when uh, when researchers try to control some aspects of our uh, of of certain variable to ex to try to look out the um, uh, the uh, the condition, yeah, they try to create a condition uh, and control the condition in order to establish some some causal relationship between variables, yeah, and also some research personality psychologists they tr they use virtual research, yeah, they do online experiment, they do online survey, they do simulations as well. Uh, this is something that I also do regularly do as a researcher. And the last one would be survey, yeah, they try to establish correlation between variables in order to better understand the impact of personality in several uh, different outcomes, yeah, social outcomes could be. And what is the role, what is actually the benefit of, of learning about personality theory? So what is the role of personality theory in psychology, in, in a general psychology research? So uh, psychologists have long recognized that some personality theories has a subjective component, yeah? So this is the precaution. So if you learn about certain personality theories, it has subjective component that uh, that comes from the individual who proposed the theory. Yeah. So sometimes it can consist, it can face the personality, the, the theory's personal life. So for example, if you find Sigmund Freud uh, personal a psychoanalysis theory is quite disturbing. It actually was a representation of of the of the bitterness, yeah, the bitterness of Sigmund Freud's personal life, yeah. So sometimes it disguised an as an autobiography of the theories. So this is the precaution. So you need to recognize, yeah, and perhaps set apart, yeah, set apart the aspects of the component that seems to be seems to be uh, very subjective, and. It reflects, <laughs> it reflects the personal life of the theorist, and also in under to un in, in order to understand personality theory, we need to also learn something about the theorist life. Yeah, in order to recognize which part of the theories that are actually just a uh, just a, a representation of, of of the theorist personal life. Yeah, so that's why you need to also slightly uh, be introduced with. Uh, the theories personal life who proposed the theory yeah so this picture so this gif is the is Sigmund Freud yeah the one who is quite famous but a very controversial figure in psychology in reality we don't use his theory anymore because it's just too absurd <laughs> yeah just too absurd so no one actually uh, no sane <laughs> research psychologist would use his theories uh, because it's completely unfalsifiable it against all aspects of how we do science yeah, in general so that's why even though he is very famous and his theory has been very influential but in reality we don't use his theories anymore uh, but again it's not only the person's uh, the, the theory's life's experience maybe the development of the uh, that influence the development of the theory maybe it could be the other way around yeah the way uh, the theorist um formulate his ideas or her ideas about about human's personality it could it perhaps it's unconsciously affect their own life so they would behave yeah they would behave as if their theories are true yeah so they uh they would be a living evidence yeah of their own theories yeah so it could be the, the other way around we're not sure which one which one are true and perhaps the theory influences the theories remember and choose to tell us about their lives yeah again this is very subjective some of them um, and so of course uh, the so it's not always uh, learning uh, learning about psychology the the the, the heart uh, the the challenge of, of learning psychology is that sometimes some of the theories are not 
sometimes it's a misguided interpretation of the reality sometimes it does not reflect reality at all yeah so we need to be really careful on interpreting whether uh, certain theories has co uh, corresponds in some ways corresponds to the real life and we were going to close this second week by um, asking us several questions and this would determine uh, determine how we uh, how we use yeah uh, those personality paradigm personality theories uh, be, uh, because uh, because certainly those theories those paradigms they would differ yeah differ in how they view human nature right so the questions would be are we in charge of our own lives yeah so the answer about uh, the answer of these questions would uh, would appear whether we f we believe in free will or we more believe in the predetermined destiny or being a fatalistic yeah about what our destiny and the second would be the second questions would be uh, what do define you whether the inherited your inherited genes your biological components or your nurturing environment yeah it also uh, it would determine which psychological theories or personality theories that fits to that explanation because they have different assumption about this and whether you are dependent or independent dependent or independent uh, of your childhood experiences whether you believe that your childhood experiences would determine how would you appear as an adult or would you believe that childhood experience has less impact or less uh, effect yeah in how you would shape yourself as an adult yeah so the answer of that questions would uh, would result in different assumptions yeah in psychological in impersonality theory is human nature unique or universal so whether you believe that we are completely unique from the rest of the world yeah or whether you believe that uh, there is some universality in human in human personality so we share similar characteristics yeah at some point and the second questions would be uh, which one describe describe your aim in life yeah best whether you seek for satisfaction whether you seek pleasure or and whether you aim to entertain yourself during your lives or whether you aim for growth personal growth it also uh, these assumption as well would dif would uh, would result in different uh, personality theories and whether and how about your outlook whether you are pessimistic about your life or whether you are optimistic about your life it also result different assumption to different psychological theories uh, different personality theories that we're going to discuss uh, uh, more deeply uh, throughout this course yeah that would be the end of this lecture uh, and i hope that you find this uh, lecture useful so if you have any questions please don't hesitate to raise those questions on google classroom or if you like to contact me privately just drop me an email yeah as simple as that so thank you so much for uh, watching and i hope that this is useful bye